Hello, I'm Joe Perino, and welcome to Sound Off. This podcast is part of the EKT Interactive Learning Network and is brought to you by Oil 101, a free 10-part introduction to the oil and gas industry. Today I'm going to talk about a subject that I've been following closely for the past six years, and that is what is happening with the offshore oil and gas safety and environmental area, particularly as a result of the BP Macondo or Deepwater Horizon incident that occurred in April of 2010. I'm going to talk a little bit about the incident, what happened and why it happened, and then the response of government, the regulator, formerly the Minerals Management Service, and the industry response. Finally, I'll wrap up with a few comments and perspectives of my own. I'd like to take this opportunity to note that I am not speaking on behalf of any of these organizations, companies, or entities My perspectives are purely my own and not theirs. First, just exactly what was the BP Macondo or Deepwater Horizon incident? Well, it was a blowout of a well on a deepwater oil rig, which caught fire, caused the rig to explode and sink, resulting in a loss of 11 lives, the rig, and an oil spill that gushed for some 87 days before being capped on July 15th of 2010 and then eventually sealed on September 19th, 2010. It involved several players. First, BP, the operator of the well. Secondly, Transocean, who owned the Deepwater Horizon uh, drilling platform. And third, Halliburton, an oil field service company, one of many companies working on the platform at that time. So what exactly happened? Well, as Transocean was drilling the well under BP's direction, it was customary to pump cement down around the outside of the drill casing to prevent any oil and gas from coming up around the exterior of that casing and up to the platform. In addition, drilling mud is used as a counterbalance to maintain pressure against the pressure of the oil and gas that would flow up as a result of the drill bit penetrating the oil and gas reservoir. According to BP's report on April 20th, managers misread pressure data and gave their approval for rig workers to replace the drilling fluid in the well with seawater, which was not heavy enough to prevent gas that had been leaking into the well from firing up the pipe to the rig, catching fire, and causing the explosion. In addition, the attempt to seal the well by activating the blowout preventer, whose shears would cut off the drill pipe and close the wellhead, failed. The drill pipe coupled inside the blowout preventer and the shears were not sufficiently strong to cut it off. The result, of course, was the oil leaking into the ocean from the ocean floor for the 87 days. The government and regulatories investigated the incident and issued a formal report in March of 2011, pointing out a number of failures, which included both physical ones, including mechanical, process, and human error involved. The report concluded that the primary cause of failure was that the blind shear rams of the blowout preventer failed to fully close and seal due to a portion of the